Let's now review the 23-24 NFHS basketball rule changes. So in rule 345, uniforms, like colored uniform bottoms, must adhere to the following. Multiple styles of uniform bottoms, pants, skirts, shorts, may now be worn by teammates. So now multiple styles are okay as long as they are light colored. Not all team members are required to wear the same style, but all styles must meet uniform requirements for manufacturers' logos and trademarks. In Rule 356, Equipment and Apparel, Undershirts, now black is a permissible color under the visiting team dark jersey. So the visiting team can now wear black in addition to the solid color of the jersey itself. But remember, team members must wear one or the other, black or the single solid color of the jersey, not both. So here we see again for the visiting team, two choices. The undershirts may be a single solid color, similar to the torso of the jersey, or solid black. All undershirts must be the same color. So team members in this play pick, they've either got to wear black or the solid red, but players on the same team cannot wear both. A significant change in the definition of bonus free throws. So the bonus is now two free throws awarded for a common foul, and this starts with the team's fifth foul in each quarter. So we still don't shoot free throws on player control and team control fouls, regardless of how many fouls have been committed. And team fouls are reset to zero at the end of each quarter, excluding the fourth quarter if we're playing overtime. Another major rule change involves throw-ins in the front court. We now have designated spots, the nearest 28-foot mark along each sideline, and spots three feet outside the lane line on the end line. So when would we use one of these four spots? The ball must be in team control in the offensive team's front court. And if there's a defensive violation, a common foul prior to the bonus, or if the ball becomes dead, the offensive team resumes play with a throw in from one of the four designated spots. When the defensive team causes the ball to go out of bounds, the throw in will be from the spot where the ball went out of bounds. So that's no different. Out of bounds will be put back in play as it has always been put in play. When we have an offensive foul or an offensive violation in the backcourt, other than the ball going out of bounds, and the defensive team then will gain control of the ball in its front court, so the key is team inbounding the ball in its front court, the throw-in will be determined by using one of the four spots. So that's for an offensive foul or violation in the backcourt that results in the defensive team gaining possession of the ball. As we stated earlier, there is no change to the procedure we're going to use after the ball goes out of bounds. So here you can see in pick A, ball goes out of bounds. We put the ball in play at the designated spot nearest to where the ball went out of bounds. In pick C, you can see a player standing in possession of the ball on a sideline. That would be an out-of-bounds violation. And the throw-in spot would be the same as it has always been for an out-of-bounds violation in the front court or the back court. And that would be the designated spot nearest to where the ball went out of bounds. So after a violation or a common foul before the bonus or any other stoppage, the throw-in will be determined by the location of the violation foul or the location of the ball when the stoppage occurred. If it's a backcourt throw-in, the designated spot nearest the foul violation or other stoppage. That's no change to the way we've always administered throw-ins. The front court throw-in would be from one of the newly established designated spots. So the change is to front court throw-ins. So let's review this diagram and discuss where the ball goes in play. So if the stoppage occurs inside the dotted imaginary line, the spot shall be the nearest point on the end line three feet outside the lane line. If the stoppage of play occurs outside this dotted line, then we go to the nearest 28 foot mark on each sideline. 
In Rule 7.6, we now have a way to rectify a throw-in error. If an official administers a throw-in to the wrong team, he or she can fix it before the first dead ball unless there's been a change of possession. So if we administer a throw-in to the wrong team, we may now correct it as long as we do so before the ball becomes dead or before we have a change of possession. In Rule 9.3, a player shall not step out of bounds on their own free will, their own volition, their own choice, and then become the first player to touch the ball after returning to the court or to avoid a violation. So in Mechanogram A, a player may now step out of bounds as long as the player is not the first to touch the ball once he comes back in bounds or the player did not step out of bounds to avoid a violation. In Mechanogram B, a player who steps out of bounds and is the first player to touch the ball after returning to the court or a player steps out of bounds to avoid a violation, in either of these scenarios, the player's committed a violation.